Hello, I am uh, Mathieu Ferry, the Prodi product team manager, and welcome today to our release session of 4D V19 R5. As usual, we, we will present the latest features and show you as a developer what you can expect in this uh, latest 4D version. We hope to inspire you with some ideas, and of course, we are available to answer all your questions. So let's get started. The R5 is now the fourth release of the 4D V19 series, and it brings many exciting features, you will see. Every time we put together this kind of uh, presentation, we are thrilled to see what our 4D engineers, product team bring to the table release after release especially since there are always features for both developers and uh, end users. Today's program will cover five topics for the View Pro, for the Write Pro, development, deployment, and for the for iOS and Android. After each topic, we'll do a short break to answer your questions. Please use the Q&A section to ask them and we'll answer them during the presentation and uh, summarize them during these breaks. And please stay focused to on the, the features we present you, other questions, other problems are better in our support system or our, uh, our forum especially. One last thing before starting, I want to thank uh, all colleagues, uh, and product team members, especially uh, connected today with us. I mean, Vanessa, Damien, David, Nicolas, but also Leticia from sales and Laurent from uh, marketing. Thank you. So let's get started with 4D View Pro. You've probably noticed that we have communicated a bit more about 4D View Pro in recent weeks. This may also be because we are delivering some very cool new features here. As you might know, 4D View Pro is based on a powerful spreadsheet solution that enables you to build documents that are way more advanced. I mean, SpreadJS. In order to guarantee that this solution is used to its fullest potential, we make sure to upgrade it with every release, and 4D V19 R5 is no exception, as 4D View Pro comes with a new version of SpreadJS, the B15.0.5. It's packed with improvements and new features designed to help accelerate your 4D View Pro development. For instance, as you see on screen, some ribbon enhancements, the text to column uh, features, with which you can now convert delimiter separated text in a cell to text across multiple columns, split it by using the delimiter. It's a uh, well-known features in tools like uh, Excel or Google Sheet, which is now arriving in, uh, in 4D View Pro. Also, the new remove duplicates option can be used to remove redundant data automatically and more quickly, as you see on screen, a few clicks here, and for the View Pro will detect duplicated lines and remove them. It can be very handy. And just this last one, uh, the change sheet tab position, with this, the position of the sheet tab strip can now be changed with a simple context menu. Also, depending on your needs, can be quite handy, this one. Okay, but that's not finished. We also have next some enhancements in the print interface. That kind of enhancement have been requested by, by many people especially in the forum, but, uh, but not only, and we're glad to, to bring that to you today. To make it easier for your customers to set up printing, the ribbon now has a new addition. It supports print settings with a page layout tab and a page setup dialog. 
as you can see here on the screen. So with the 1905, there is now this page, page setup dialog. It includes several tabs allowing users to manage many options that are available programmatically in the VP set print info command. But now you have them in this dialog. Let's go a little bit deeper. You get this tab for page orientation or scaling, another tab for margins, another tab here for headers and footers, obviously, and a last sheet tab for other various printed related options. But that's not the end. The print menu now includes a preview and some options also to modify print settings, once again, as you can see here on the screen. It's a very handy dialog where you can adapt here your, your settings and get, and get a preview just aside, just on the right. And to finish on the printing topic with ODView Pro, just, just know that on Windows, when you will click on the print button, you will get this new print settings window uh, opening. And uh, once again, you can refine here your, your print settings and get, a, and get a preview. It's very similar to what you get when you want to print uh, from from a web browser, it's not. So all of this, all of this, it's done. It's delivered to make sure your worksheets look right and everywhere. But I'm not finished with for the View Pro today, and I want to talk to you about data context, which is, to be honest, one of my favorite for the View Pro features. So with this, for the View Pro offers you a new way to load your data and create your templates. It's the data context. It allows you to create your document with placeholders and then fill them by setting this data context. Just, we get here a, a, a little preview of these features or, or what you get. In other words, you can automatically populate business content with the right information for every situation, be it reports, invoices, contracts, any other document type, with, if you have a look at it, very, very little code. Just going a little bit deeper and see the, the feature in action with, with, uh, with this small example, you see here we have an, in fact, an object on the left, a current people object. And with one line, of, one line of code and a single button, you can load it in this template on the right, modify your data, and get the modifications back in your object. It's a very, very powerful feature for the View Pro. And we are sure it will open you a whole lot of uh, of creativity and new features, and it will ease your developments, we're sure of it. Well, that's the end for the View Pro for today. And it's the moment of a short break for question and answers. So feel free to ask them. Not a lot of questions for now. Maybe they will come later. I give you a few more minutes. I'm glad it means I was crystal clear. Sorry. Great. We'll continue. We'll continue with, as planned, for the right pro. So now it gets really exciting for the view for the right pro, sorry, has received an extremely cool new feature to take your documents from good to great. Well, surprise, data contexts are everywhere. 
4D V1905 opens the world of order and object-oriented development to 4D RIPRO documents. 4D RIPRO documents often contains formulas, returning data, or calculations, depending on, on the database. And thanks to context, associating the data with documents is as straightforward as using the this keyword, as you can see on the screen. Whether you're dealing with letters, email campaigns, catalog generations, voice printing, access to data to be displayed or printed is made much more efficient. Let me show you how it looks. Here you have a, a simple template referencing with a dot notation various fields, various fields of, of uh, the context. You can hear display values of the selected record on the right. And changing the record just changes the context. It's a uh, one line of code, just one line. You can here go back to formulas. Adapt your text, add some fields, very simple. And it's updated live, in fact. And with this, it's very simple to, to write a, a small loop. I really like that part of, the, of this clip where you can massively generate PDFs. I think you all have an idea of how it could be used online, on screen or, uh, or off screen to gener generate documents such as uh, invoices or letters, for example. About that, I really recommend, and I will do so often in this presentation, I recommend you to check out the blog, check out the examples, the how do I, they are fully available, fully detailed, really detailed to, to help you understand how it works, but it's, it's very, very simple. It's not, not, the, not the end, sorry, for, uh, for, for the right pro. Next, we have table headers. These features brings another useful table display option available by programming or through the 4D Write Pro interface widgets. Starting with 4D V1905, you can define headers in tables and automatically repeat them after a column or a pitch breaks. Just a quick clip to see how it behaves. Here you see a table split among several pages and several columns. And here in this how do I, you can set how many rows you want as headers. And when you, once you do so, you see that it gets repeated over pages and over columns. You can set two lines, you can set three lines, four lines, et cetera. They will be repeated at once. You can do it in the how do I in a standard action way, but also uh, in the, with the programming way. Here on screen, the result is basically very similar. And also what you get with this, uh, with this little demo is a way to decorate the header and it will be taken into account on all pages here. So I also recommend this demo. You will see that the, the document really reacts very well when you change the layout of the document. You go from, from portrait to, to landscapes and so on. We believe it's a very, very important feature for 4 Write Pro. And I also tell you to stay tuned uh, because with R6, which is available now as beta, you will see what you can get both with table headers and uh, context, but I don't say I don't say more. Let's continue with uh, linked paragraphs with for the right pro to have a better control over the documents uh, layout for the B1905 is shipped with the possibility to choose if a paragraph and the one that follows must remain linked. I mean, not separated by an automatic page or column break. Here, once again, a little demo to see how it reacts. This is typically the kind of documents that where you need to, to, to keep 
the image with its descriptions of the whys, it's a nonsense. So now you can do so. It was a highly requested feature from, from various uh, customers. And you see that it reacts perfectly when you change the, la the, the layout of the document from, from portrait, landscapes, columns, whatever you want. So another very handy feature to, to get your document to perfection. That's it for, for the right pro. And it's the moment for question and answers. And I think in the meantime, we received a few questions about for the view pro probably. So first question was, good morning, thank you. If possible to create some chart or dashboard, of course it is, Vanessa answered you. It is possible with for the view pro to create charts, dashboards, whatever you want. It's the idea, the very idea of the product. Charts again, yeah. So these were answered. Um, do you plan, other question, do you plan to integrate charts in for the view pro? I mean, if I understand well the question, it is already included. I don't know exactly what you mean about chart, but for the view pro is chart capable. So have a look at maybe not everywhere in our documentation, but check out the spread.js documentation where you will get everything. It's a it's a very big product, very rich product. And uh, if you need help, uh, contact our support or ask on the forum. But yes, we have charts in for the view pro. Am I correct in thinking that all the context will not work with a virtual structure? This, unfortunately, I don't know if you're correct or not. Sorry. <laughs> um, I don't know. We will answer you uh just after this meeting i would have liked to to be able to answer you right now i i don't know perhaps another po will be able to answer you afterwards but uh i'm so sorry not being able to answer that uh, hmm. uh. that's it for the questions for for the view pro for for the right pro. So let's continue with develop, developer news. <clears throat> Drinking a little bit, sorry. And we'll start with with the fact that now components can publish classes. It's a tremendous feature. And it can help you in one use case in particular, but not only. Just suppose your application is still running in binary mode. In that case, this feature will enable you to benefit from classes and object-oriented development just by using a component in project mode to create your own classes and use them from your binary mode application. So starting with 4DV19R5, you get, as you can see here on screen, a new component section in the structure settings, allowing you to, to configure how your component classes and functions will be exposed in the 4D method editor once the component is installed in the host database. Basically, it's very straightforward, very simple. You just here define a namespace that will be displayed uh, in your 4D code me uh, method editor, sorry. So we believe that this answers a very strong request from many of you, many of our customers, 
asking for using benefiting from classes and object oriented development and all the what it brings but still in binary mode so this kind of mixes both you can benefit from all these new things cool new things classes and so on you can maintain your application in binary mode and why not even think of a slow transition because this will make you live what is a project in project mode let's continue with a seamless way to manage parameters with for the v1905 developers don't have to handle complex parameters checks such as a count parameter i think you know what i mean value types when you are calling a function and passing parameters a new command is provided called copy parameters as you see on screen allowing to easily pass parameters used for a function or method call to another function or method this results in a lighter, more elegant, and easier to read code, of course. Just see it in action in a, in a specific use case where with the same code of the same function, depending on the value of a first parameter, in fact, two different other functions will be called passing the two last parameters so the first one is doing a concatenation here hello john and the second one will not do that it will do a sum it's a very handy way to cover that kind of need uh, and you see no verification of uh, of uh, parameters whatsoever Also, this evolution, I wanted to insist, it has been requested in the forum. It was, uh, it's a very good way, it's a proof that it's a very good way for you to asking for features. The debate was very interesting, uh, interesting, sorry, in the forum. Uh, so we are glad to be able to bring that to you uh, with, uh, with the 19R5. Continuing with diagnostic logs, they have become more and more critical for troubleshooting, of course. So we decided to reorganize them entirely by improving their content and adding a way to filter them with logs level, log levels, sorry, such as trace, debug, info, warning, error, as you can see on screen. So thanks to the new parameter uh, diagnostic, diagnostic log level, sorry, you will be able to control not only the flow of logs, but also uh, its size. You will be able to keep it smaller uh, or, or not, depending on what you really need. We finish this topic, this developer topic, by with a order uh, feature, allowing you to optimize performance with a complete control of a REST request. So this is uh, for experts, but not only. For DV 19R5 gives you a better control over order context and cache for both client server and rest to improve performance as you might know 4d already provided with v17 r5 an out of the box optimization with context but now with v19 r5 we are going let's say the extra mile by providing you with a new command that enables you to have a better control over your code Check out this example on screen. You see here that instead of getting all persons attributes in your query, you can clearly specify that you want only first name and last name, just here by using the new command set remote context info. 
And I think you can feel that obviously performance will be improved by that. I really strongly recommend you to check out this, uh, this blog post here. Uh, and especially the how do I. Uh, the how do I is uh, very, very detailed, very, very clear. So uh, for such a feature, if you really want to, to get this kind of optimization, uh, you should spend the time reading it. So we finish with developer news. It's the moment for questions. Um, not a lot of question. Either I'm very clear or you all already read uh, the blog and it's uh, perfectly clear. Anyway, we will have a moment also at the end. I know questions don't come, can, can come just after, you know? So always like that. So let's continue, let's move on <clears throat> with um, deployment news. Starting with access control. Um, you know that on server side, uh, the current user is always the designer, and therefore access to Runtime Explorer is always allowed. If you prefer to change this behavior, 4DV1905 enables you to restrict administrators from accessing both Data Explorer and Runtime Explorer in your deployed merge server. But I just mentioned Data Explorer, what, what, what is it? Maybe you're not familiar with it. So if you're not familiar already with Data Explorer, we highly recommend you to check the video that I will share in the chat. Just let me a few moments finding it to everyone. So in the chat, you get the link to a very, very nice uh, demo of the Data Explorer. We are not going to, to view it entirely uh, today because it's a five minute clip and, uh, and we don't have time. Uh, but what we're gonna say is that as a 4D developer, you are necessarily interested in visualizing your data immediately and easily while you update or create it. Or let's suppose you're more of a 4D administrator and you need to quickly find a record that causes an error in your application due to an inappropriate or corrupted data. All of this is possible with the 4D Data Explorer out of the box. It's a modern user-friendly web interface that comes with a powerful query engine to view your data. So I just take a few moments to describe you the screen. You get your data classes, you get your attributes, the ones that, that are indexed, the primary keys. You can select what you want to see on screen. It's live, it's uh, real time. You can move the columns. On the right, you get the, the full details of the record you selected. On top, you get filters by column or you have access with a little button uh, to the, the full query system. It's a very, very, very useful feature. Uh, it's effortless for you. Uh, you don't have to code it, it's just there. Uh, if let's suppose you update your model, you update your data, you just have to refresh the, um, the browser and it's there. You don't have to write a form. You don't have to, to think of it. Uh, I think since it exists, there's not a single day with me not using it, in fact. So check out the video if you haven't done so yet and uh, give us your feedback. And stay tuned because in the R6 beta, 
already available for, for beta testers. This feature will get a very tremendous feature. I don't say too much, but you will be able to, to view relations in there. So it's almost becoming the perfect tool. Let's continue. For dv 19 r 5 brings many enhancements to for the applications building. For starters, you can now remove unnecessary libraries such as the ones we see on screen, such as so Ceph, PHP, Mechab for the updater. For the ones who don't know, Ceph is what manages the the web areas. And this allows you to reduce the size of your applications, especially, and in fact, when you don't use, when you don't make use of such libraries. Application size uh, tend to grow a lot for the included. Uh, so I guess we you can save a lot of space and can ease your deployments uh, to, to, to remove that kind of modules. But also, and as I saw, we have Japanese customers connected today. Uh, just know that we have merged the Japanese version of 4D and the international version of 4D on macOS. So you now get a single installer for, for everything. I guess also it, uh, it will ease your, your life. So we continue here with another moment of uh, question and answers. I don't know if it's morning everywhere. No. No, not any no, no question today. You're very quiet. Okay. We continue with 4D for mobile. We are approaching the end of the of the session. So really, if you have some question, feel free. Don't be shy. Um, with 4D V19 R5, we focused on 4D for Android. So just be aware that uh, it keeps evolving and it now offers formatters, the same formatters as 4D for iOS. What is a formatter? As a, as a reminder, a formatter allows you to modify the format of a field. In fact, it's appearance, it's a look and feel. But also it is used to indicate if tapping the field, pressing the field should trigger an interaction with other smartphone apps on the device. Just a quick example, when you tap a URL on a URL on a form, you expect that it will open a browser like Chrome, because we're talking of Android here. So a quick list here of formatters that are now also available on 4D for Android, the address formatter and Interacting with it will open a map application, usually Google Maps, I guess. But it will be, in fact, the default map application deployed on your device. Also, the phone formatter, I think you guess what will happen. It will open the phone app of the device. The URL formatter, I just discussed, I just mentioned it, sorry. So here you see that it will open Chrome, but it could open Firefox, it could open whatever you, whatever is defined by default on the, on the device. Just like in fact, any other native application. The HTML formatter is a little bit specific. It does not bring you more interactions. Um, but it is here to display 4D style text in a detailed view, as you can see here. And I will finish with the email formatter. I think there's no suspense 
uh, it will open the mailing app of your device. So for matters, where do you where do you get them? Uh, in fact, you get them directly from the mobile project editor. There's a, a link for you to access this page, or you can also directly access this page with the link I, I share with you at the bottom of the screen. So you get here all the list of formatters. They were already available for 44 iOS, and they are now for 44 Android. So suppose you have already an application based on 44 iOS with formatters. Now they work with 44 Android. Also, be aware that formatters is are a point of customization of uh, of the apps you can write your own formatters if you want a specific interaction or a specific look and feel that would not be available in our in our gallery and also if you're proud of you or not only you can submit us a formatter of yours so feel free to do it well just to finish on the mobile part, be aware that the blog lists all the features um, of uh, 4D Mobile, specifying what is available on Android, what is available on iOS. Basically, we have reached a point where both platforms are now almost aligned. I did not mention in that presentation the barcode or QR code support, which is now supported in um in both platforms uh the missing point in android are now just located in the push notification systems and the deep linking but the rest the rest basically is uh is supported and we have another moment of question and answers we I saw that I see that we have received one new question uh, about user S uh, a, uh, admin group. I think in single user mode that are disabled, how can we manage access privileges, for example, for menus? Uh, I see Damien is answering. Damien is our expert for that. So I will let him the privilege of uh, of answering you no more question it's clear or you already saw the the previous english session maybe so you already know all the answers okay Let's, let's continue. I am going to switch my screen sharing to another screen here because I really wanted to make um, a quick reminder about the monthly hotfixes for feature releases. Here on screen, you have the communication we made on the blog uh, last uh, April, uh, and we kept our promise. We started with V19 R5, R4, sorry, the cycle of releasing Hotfix 1, then Hotfix 2. Uh, we, we are very glad to now be able to, to deliver that to you. We are convinced that it is a strong a uh, strong message sent in favor of for you using uh, our releases, feature releases. And of course, as it is a success, as we got very good feedbacks from you, we will continue with, uh, with V19R5. So V19R5 will also receive a hotfix one and a hotfix two. Other thing that I wanted to, to share with you today. Here is our recent call for contributions to our new 4D awesome list on GitHub. If you don't know what is a awesome list, 
just read the blog. If you don't know how to use it, just read the blog. It's something we wanted to initiate to get a place where our community of developers can share information, can share project they're proud of, or maybe project where they would need help. If you want to find some, some specific resource, some example that go deeper than our otherwise, it's a very good place. Uh, and here you can see that some customers like you already started to, to participate and to share contents. Uh, I really recommend there's a very high quality here of the contents that are shared. So don't be shy, share with us, share with you, with all of us. Um, it's a very good place to, to start something here. I have finished with this. I will go back to the presentation. And we are reaching the end of it. I'm already. Just one last word. Of course, all what I presented you this morning is available in much more details in our blog. So go read the blog. Even sometimes we have some hidden gems that we don't necessarily present in this kind of presentation that are here uh, very well described in the blog. I especially recommend one series of blogs uh, from Thomas Moe about system workers. Uh, Thomas wanted to, to make a big example, a very detailed example about how to use system workers. And the example taken is the file transfer. So Thomas explains how he did. Thomas expl uh, shares also the, the GitHub repository where the file transfer class is located. Uh, and it's a very, very interesting example, especially because it covers FTP, FTPS, SFTP, HTTP, Google Drive, uh, whatever, I'm missing some. Uh, so I also think that this is something that is of interest even for your projects, for your applications. And because it is on GitHub, you can download, you can fork it, you can modify it, you can propose us improvements. It's uh, the beauty of Git. So check out this uh, series of blog. It's free blogs, uh, free blog posts, sorry, with videos. Uh, with, with the GitHub uh, repository, you will, uh, you will like it. Uh, we are approaching the end. Maybe we can review Damien's answer about uh, the, the very last question. Damien explains that a single user application is supposed to run only with one user, of course. It's the name of it. And if you want to manage your own privilege, you have your own user system. Yeah. Okay, yeah, file a request on the 4D forum. Thank you, Damien. As we said uh, several times, if you need something, please, please use the forum request section of the, the feature request for, uh, section of the forum. There you can debate, you can get ideas, you can get discussions with, with other people experiencing the same problems of you, as you. And uh, be sure we check it every day and at a, uh, at a given moment, when you get enough discussion, when you get enough vote, you get our intention, attention. So, uh, no more. Ah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe one question: Will output form continue to be supported in the future? They will. Will they ever be able to use order? Um, output form, of course, will continue to be supporting in the future uh 
this is what we do in 4D. You write your code and it lasts a very, a very long time. So there is no plan to discontinue output forms uh, whatsoever. Will they ever be able to use ODA? Uh, that's a good question. You can maybe file a, a feature request. It could be interesting. We have we have had some discussions uh, around that. So if you have uh, something in favor of that, yeah, do. Don't hesitate. Don't hesitate, really. I think we reached the end of, um, of this session. I'm very glad, uh, and I thank you for your participation. Uh, the next one is in uh, three months or less. So if you haven't so, I wish you a very nice holiday. I hope you don't suffer too much from the heat wave, if you have heat wave where you are. And uh, I say goodbye and thank you to everyone. Thank you.